The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the markets today through the eyes of some technology that we look at. You can see the German DAX and also the FTSE have been in a uptrend, as has the rest of the USA. Markets have been very, very strong. And so that has continued this morning, and we're up again pretty sharply. But um, we're coming into some real interesting uh, spots here that I'll share with you in just a minute. But we need to take care of a little business here, uh, first of all, and that is in the uh, gold market. If you remember, yesterday when we were on the air, we were talking about buying at 1882. That was a retracement back. Oh, let's get this up here so you folks can see it, that the low there, the absolute low there, at 1876 was an exact 61 percent retracement and then we came back and tested it again at the 1882 level and the profit objective on that is up near where we're getting close to today which is 1906 to 1908 which would probably even be a relatively good um, uh, uh, short indication too but look look at the action last night folks uh, you'll notice that the market wrote, went up to 1900 then backed off six dollars and it stayed at the 382 level for three and a half hours and then this morning boom away it went and that's why we're heading up to this level of 19 we've been as high as 1904 but we think we should get to 1906 to 1908 is what we're looking at in the gold market. Since we're on the gold, I'm going to spend just a time, a little time here uh, looking at this gold on a longer term time frame. If you'll look at this, folks, going back to uh, when we made the uh, really big three drive to a bottom in December of uh, 2016, you can see the three drive to a bottom. The gold was trading at 1030. Uh, per ounce, uh, we had a rally up. It pulled back to a 78% retracement at 10.50. Uh, then it pulled back to another 78% retracement at 1,200. And then it was off to the races, completing what we think that this last ABCD move was up to uh, 2093. Uh, and now we've backed off uh, about uh, 240 bucks. Uh, from that level, but I think we're getting ready for a little bit larger correction, folks. Uh, my, this is my two cents worth, and believe me, if you pay more than two cents, you've overpaid. But uh, this is what we're going to look at here this morning. You'll you'll notice here um, as we look at this very long term in gold. Now we're going to go way back uh, to well, let's let's bear it off, off not, not a little less longer term. <laughs> going to go back to just one year, but you know that that three eight two that is sitting there at uh, 1770. And that is near the old high that we had way back in April before we had a nice correction. So that's what I'm possibly looking at here, 1770 uh, in the gold market. And I don't know if it's going to happen or not. I'm just looking at the, the prices. I don't know anything about the, uh, uh, the longer term uh, cycles or anything like that. All I'm just looking at is that there's a possibility that we could do that. I mean, remember that December has been a key low in gold for the last uh, four or five years. I mean, it's really been uh, pretty close. You can see December of last year, you see we were trading down around 1450 before we took off. So there's some strong cycles in there. And if you remember, we have this uh, cycle that uh, Larry Williams was kind enough to send us. And you'll notice here that he's looking for gold to come down in the middle of next year. And I don't know if that's going to happen, or of uh, middle of next year. And he's expecting something pretty big around the 22nd of uh, December. So that's a longer-term cycle. I don't trade off of those. I'm just looking at the patterns, and that's all I'm really trying to see as we go through this level here. Now we had a request to take a look at TLT. I want to get this up here because this has had a a pretty big move in here. This has been the bond move because bonds have been dropping quite a bit. You'll see here, uh, we made the top there back in March, early March. 
with that huge volume, you can see the huge volume that we had in the Treasury uh, TLT, the ETF for the Treasuries. Then we had the big drop down into the 23rd. That was when the stock market was bottoming. We had to rally up to the 78% level. Now we're testing the 78% level on the downside. Uh, and then notice here the volume has been very weak compared to what we had during those big spike levels. So there should be really good support down about two points at uh, 157 and change in the uh, TLT. But again, you know, anything below this 156 level in TLT is not going to look uh, is not going to look uh, very, very good. You know, that's the main thing. Someone's asking a question here and uh, from Bo, and he's uh, going to type it in for us, and hopefully we'll be able to read it. Review copper, him long and targeting 308 and then possibly 313. I can certainly do that, but before I do that, Bo, I want to get to the, uh, the crude oil market because uh, – uh, this was the second question that we had here. Looking at crude here over the last month or so, you'll notice that high that we made up there at that 43.80 level was an exact 61% retracement. And then we dropped all the way down to um, 36, 36 bucks. Then we go up to 41, back to 36 bucks. And the ABCD structure on this at the 78% level would take you to 42.10. And we're trading at 40.70 right now which is the 61% retracement. So it's either stopping here at this 4080 level or it's going to go up to that 4200. Now, if by any chance we clear 4380, that's going to be a game changer, folks, because that would mean that the market topped at that FIB number at 4380 and spent uh, a month and a half uh, in a correction and then popped up. That That's really bullish. So uh, I'm still very bearish the oil, but uh, my opinion is that if we get much above 43.80, you have to throw in the short side of the oil, and uh, we'll have to see it. Remember, all this is based on technical analysis. It's not based on uh, anything else, not the number of people subscribing to anything or anything other than that. So that's pretty much uh, you know what we're what we're looking at. Uh, that's what we're watching here. So here we'll move on here to uh, one other thing now before we get to the copper. Uh, well, let's do the copper because uh, we're in that, mo in that mode where we can cover this. We've got to cover the stocks, folks, because we're at such a critical level here uh, in the stocks that they really need to be uh, – they need to give our attention to it. And there we go with the copper. I'm going to put the hourly up on copper because that gives you a pretty good idea of what's been happening in copper and um, I think you're getting pretty close to that 308. Yep, there you go. Let's get this up here. Um, here we'll be able to see it right here now. Uh, here's a, here's a really good question that you have, Bo. Okay, we're we're trading at 304 now, which was basically a 78% uh, retracement off of the uh, range of yesterday. That came in at 304 and a half, so we're trading at 304. And your your target is up there at 308, which is spot on. There's a double 1.618 uh, number right there. Uh, that certainly is. Now, in order to get to that 308, okay, you're, you're, you're looking at another four points, okay, and you're looking at a really strong low at 301. So that's a difference of three points on the upside. And uh, let's see, one, two, two. In other words, if we take below 301, that's going to be very bad, okay, and then you're not going to make your 308. But right now, 308 still looks pretty good. Because you let's just see the double 1.618. You'll be able to see it very easily, which is... Uh, which is quite nice here. We got a break coming up, but, but you can see the double uh, 1.618 numbers up there at 308 and a half. That's certainly, uh, certainly doable. Let's take a break. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we're going to go back in time a little bit, back to March 23rd, and I posted the chart here of a four-hour chart of the E-mini when it was making a ABCD three drive to a bottom pattern right on the 23rd of March, right there at that equinox. And if you remember, that was the day that uh, Larry Williams came out and said, I'm all in. I'm buying all the stocks I can. And that was the bottom. And, uh, of course, we rallied uh, – made new highs as a matter of fact and uh, what we're doing now is quite interesting so we'll take a quick look at that right here now, i'm not going to do all of this because it's going to be featured in the newsletter uh, coming up this weekend because there's just so many of these patterns that are lining up the same way but i have to share one of them with you because it's it's just about as perfect as you can get i don't know if you like whoops shut the front door and raise the rent let's get this up here to do it right here hold on one second here all right, this is the one that counts. Here's the E-mini S&P. Uh, this is over the past month. We topped on September 3rd, the anniversary date of the um, stock market crash of 1929. Whether that means anything or not, don't know. All I know is we are making a 61% tracement here at 34.38. We've been as high as 34.33. You can see the ABCD pattern there. And that's going to be a very interesting spot, and that's one that we should pay very, very close attention to. And um, these are just numbers and patterns. That's really all they are. And believe it or not, I had the one for the NASDAQ done, and the little rascal has disappeared on me. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Let's not worry about that one. We'll move on uh, to the next one. But since everybody's going to be asking, I'm going to do it. It'll only take me one second to take a quick look at it. And because it is that important from my perspective, and remember, I'm just a technician. You know, I don't know diddly squat about this. Hold on one thing here. Take a look at this here, folks. This is what we have here in the NASDAQ. And uh, you'll notice here that we are approaching the 50% uh, level, not the 61% level like the other, but we are approaching the 61% 50% retra retracement in the NASDAQ. We've hit it one, two, three. This would be the fourth time. And if you remember, when we have Stan Harley in, he always talks about that rule of four for GAN. And if we get through the fourth time, that can be very, very bullish. 
And that's the main thing to pay attention to. But I would highly recommend, you know, the NASDAQ is, you know, that's really tough because you're only looking at about eight stocks when you're looking at that NASDAQ 100. But I would highly recommend you take a look at the E-mini S&P and also the New York Stock Exchange Index and look at the different harmonics that are coming together here uh, at this 61% retracement because it may or may not mean anything, but if it does, and if it does, it'll mean something, you know, very, very significant. That's what we're looking at. The reason why I'm spending some time here with the NASDAQ and the S&P is, you know, we shorted the uh, the NASDAQ back at the 382. If you remember here back in um, around, around September the 15th, and it had a huge drop. We had... Uh, we made uh, we we sold it at uh, 1548 i believe and we covered it at 0930 we took six and a half handles out of it which was that that's a huge amount you know it's 13 13 large and that worked pretty good it went down a lot lower but anyway that's what it was and haven't we haven't done anything since that time because we haven't had a really good pattern you know to line up that makes everything look pretty good and that's what i'm looking at right now it's looking pretty good i know it's crazy to think it would go to this to the other side, but we'll be able to look that. That's good. All right, good. We're going to have Bill Chapman on here at the break, which will really be good because he's got some good things, and he certainly knows the S&P uh, like no other. He's very, very good at that, he, he and his trend reaction service. So let's remind us where we are today here. Let me double-check some of these prices because uh, we're getting ready to open here, and I wanted to see if we're getting near these levels that we're – paying very, very close attention to because they line up so nice. Hey, they don't line up this perfectly all the time like they do in the S&P and stuff. So you got to pay attention to it when you do it because it gives you a chance to get in there without risking an arm and a leg. And an arm and a leg these days with double, with double amputees everywhere, you could really get hurt. And you don't want to get hurt as you're doing these market or trading these markets. We're trading around 1429 or 28 in the S&P. That number is uh, the exact number of that 618 is 34 of uh, 38, folks. That's 10 handles from where we are right now, and that's nothing. I mean, this thing jumps. This jump, this thing in the middle of the night last night, it went from 23. Uh, it went, no, it went, where'd it go? It went from 17 to 31 with just hardly any down move at all, and then it backed off a little bit. That's when, the, you know, reaction was going along with the, uh, with the debate of, uh, you know, Mr. Trump. And uh, and uh, Mrs. Uh, Harris on who was going to decide which one was going to move to Caracas first, and we'll know that probably on November the fourth. Uh, on a side note here, uh, you know I, we have friends all over the world, and a lot of a lot of people will listen to us all over the world. But I had a, a phone call yesterday from someone from a middle middle western city, small city, around fifty thousand. He just wanted to give me some information. They vote early there. They always have. And uh, usually they go in and they go out. It takes five minutes. In 2016, it took five minutes. The line yesterday to get in to vote was two and a half hours long, and it was raining. And he said, what, what's causing this? I said, there are people out there that are voting. You know, that's basically all you can say. So, you know, I don't know if it means anything or not. But this time in 2016, over in the big pond uh, city of London, England, uh, William Hill, the big bookmaker, had bet the fact that Donald Trump was an eight to one underdog to win the election. So with five days to go in the election, a William Hill paid off all the Clinton people. This is, I swear to you, this is the truth. He paid off all the people that they, they had won the bet. And guess what happened? Eight days later, the things had changed, and William Hill lost a lot of money. Now, what happened to the guy that made that decision? Yes, you're right. It was William Hill, and you'll never guess. He's a big supporter of the Clintons and friends of the Clintons, and he was willing to take that uh, $1 billion hit, and that's exactly uh, what it cost him. Because not only did he have to pay off the, the Clinton people, then he had to turn around and pay off the Trump people at 8 to 1. So who knows? It's about 8 to 1 right now this year, too, so who knows? Nothing changes. You're right. It's just the, the, the colors on the spots are different dots. That's basically what we're watching here. Okay, now we've covered the uh, the currencies. I still think we're heading lower. We have a uh, our short position in the euro has been good to us. That's been working pretty good. But the we these next two days, folks, we focus on that uh, that 34 
uh, 38 level in the S&P today, tomorrow, the next day. I don't know. And if we go blasting through it, it just means that there's a failure. And a failure there would mean you'd go about 15 handles above it. So between 38 and 53, uh, 3453, anything above 3453 would certainly, you know, constitute a, uh, a negative uh, re response to this. So that's where we're, we're going to have Bill Chapman on here to talk to us about some of this stuff. And maybe he can give us some views of what's going on and uh, we'll see what's happening. Oh, one other one other factor. Uh, Sarah and I have talked it over, and we are moving to Caracas, uh, Venezuela. You can get some good deals on real estate down there right now. We're going to take our own food, but we'll still be able to be doing the shows, but they'll be coming in from Caracas. So we'll be right back, folks, with Bill Chapman of Trend Reaction. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Bill Chapman on the line. Bill, how are you doing? Very good. Very good, Larry. How about yourself? I'm very good. How's everything in the great state of New Jersey? Well, we're just getting a bit of t a taste of fall has hit the air. Uh -huh. And you know, in a couple more weeks, as it gets cooler here, no one's going to be complaining about wearing a mask. <laughs> it's going to be the one thing that's keeping you warm. There'll be icicles on it, I guess. 
Bill, what are you uh, what are you looking at right now? And get us, give us your opinion of what you see happening over the next couple of weeks. You're very experienced at doing this. You've been around quite a while, and I think the folks would like to get your opinion. You want to just uh, unload whatever you have. Well, you know, it's interesting because one of the things that I, I really like to do is uh, follow the money supply. And uh, what I need to do Uh oh, did we lose connection? Uh oh. Can you hear me? Uh, I think I missed some a little bit. Go right ahead. Uh, we were talking. You were talking about money supply. I want to bring up my slideshow here. Okay. Can you put it into the den because I I haven't got it. So you'll have to be able to do that uh, somehow through either through your Skype connection or whatever. Hmm. Got some type of connection problem, I think, Bill. Yep. I do believe Something we have a connection right. problem here. Yeah, we have. We definitely have a connection problem. Must be Mercury retrograde, but that's not the case. So <laughs> <laughs> Mars is retrograde. That's even worse. That's the that's the planet of war. But who knows? <laughs> okay. All right. You still there, Bill? Yeah, you should be able to see that now, Larry. Uh, we haven't been able to see it yet. I don't know what. Uh, did you drop it to me in email? Oh, wait, there's a slide. It's coming up. We're good. Fire away, my friend. Fire away. Bang. The, what I was always looking for is the monetary base. Mm -hmm. And usually get a lot of information from the Federal Reserve out in St. Louis. They're very generous with providing information to do the research. And the idea here, I'm a monetarist, and I really like to see where the money is going. But as of late, and just recently, they have decided to, you know, one of those tools that I use is the monetary base, the total monetary base. And this is what they've done over the past month. They've discontinued the information. Huh. The same Why thing with the that? excess reserves of the depository institutions. They probably heard me the last time I was on making mention of the fact that they've increased the percentage change, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner, 117.2% from a year ago on the excess reserves of depository institutions. And the key here was being able to see whether the banks were holding on to those excess reserves or whether the banks were depleting those reserves. And our friends at the Federal Reserve have discontinued that chart also. Wow. So you get beginning to tie your hands on trying to get information out of these guys. But I decided I'd just take a look at what's happening in the ES and the ES is still maintaining its 22 day cycle. So nothing has really shifted. You know, we're still running the same course we had previously. We're still trending and we're hitting some periods of resistance, especially on September 3rd, where we did that break in the market. And that should be right about where we were, uh, Really, we were anticipating that. The for the sake for for my curiosity, I decided also to look at gold, and I found that gold was running a twenty-six day cycle, and the break in gold on August fifth was interesting in and of itself because. That was also around the time that you started to get the run in the technology stocks. And I was just wondering if there was a portfolio shift from gold into the technology stocks. But I'm expecting gold to move down to where that, where you see the green circle there, where, where it gapped up. And I would anticipate that happening 
you know, anywhere between now and November 25th. Okay. We had. Now, where are we I have going? a question for one of our listeners, Bill. Where is he uh, for when you do, you do you uh, do you do do you trade gold in your trend reaction uh, group, or do you just? Uh, I thought no, you just I, traded I don't, the S and P. I don't trade gold, and mainly that's from. Uh, it's some. It's. I don't trade metals. I don't trade commodities. Uh, I do primarily the indices. Okay. But uh, I always like to see, like I said, where where's the money going? Now this is a piece that. We recorded on 5820. Where are we going forward? Where I see us going forward here is that we're right around in this territory. And I'm insisting that we're going higher here to possibly the, um, just below where we were. Around 3,100 or something like that in the S&P? Uh, yeah, 30, possibly 3,411. Now, 34.11 is where I thought we were going, and that was back in uh, May 8th. And I got this chart from the guys at Spot Gamma, and these are the Spot Gamma price bands. And they do an interesting thing on analysis and analyzing the market on a daily basis, is that they have these price bands that are the concentration of options interest at various strike prices. So you have an absolute gamma, a call wall, the zero gamma where there's no risk on either side. Uh, like the absolute gamma is the strike with the largest absolute call and put gamma function. So it's offering points of support and resistance in the marketplace. But if you look at the call wall there, it's a 34.10. Now, this has changed. This is from the 6th. Today's the 8th. This is from two days ago. But it gives you a very good idea on where the market should be trading. So, like down there on the left where the put wall is, that's where the strike with the largest concentration of puts and it's a potential target for a bottom on sell-offs. So that's how that chart is read. And they do some really good work over there at uh, Spot Gamma. Okay, we have to pay a few bills. Uh, Bill, stay with us and we'll be right back with Bill Chapman of Trend Reaction. Gold market has taken off topside a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. 
Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, we're back and we're talking with Bill Chapman of Trend Reaction. Bill, you want to continue, please? Yeah. So, in trying to figure out where the market was going, you know, we, we, we've come down, we've snapped back, and I wanted to bring up a chart that I, that I use in order to keep my – my feet on the ground and, and the direction, make sure I'm headed in the right direction. And it's the VIX versus the skew. And here you can see where anytime the skew crosses the VIX, you get a downturn in the market. And then when the VIX crosses, when the skew comes from the downside and up, uh, you get positive uh, moves in the market. Okay, Bill. Uh, we have a, two questions. First of all, on your other chart, the M1, was that what you were saying, that they're not reporting M1 anymore? No, not M1, not M1. And it's just the okay. monetary base. Okay. And uh, you could, uh, we have a qu two questions already about the SKU. Can you tell our folks what you're looking at and what you mean by the SKU? And I'll take you right to the next chart. Um, okay. The SKU is the tail end in the options. Okay. So it's measuring the the activity in the options a month down the road. Okay. Now, flattening of the skew illustrates that no, that no one is paying up for longer-term options. And that's a lack of faith that the market is, isn't going to climb any higher. But what has okay. happened quite dramatically since we last spoke, and we, this was the chart that I showed you the last time we were speaking, what has happened since is that the skew has now crossed the VIX, and we're getting the divergence mm -hmm. within the ES. So unless this thing turns around right in here, and the VIX starts to come back in, and the skew starts to go up, one or two th that's one option, or the other option is the ES comes down in price. Aha. Uh -huh. So I think I figured it out. It's either going to go up or down. That's correct. <laughs> you nailed it. I have that problem every day, Bill. <laughs> no, it makes sense. I see that. Yeah. Okay. So we also talked about mapping and road, road mapping the market. And I've been currently been using the industrials of 2012 as my road map. Uh -huh. And from August 8th to where we are now. It's still holding the same pattern. Oh, sure this is. is. Wow. You, you get a double top in the market, a possibility of a double top in the market here, mm -hmm. and then a break to the downside. Hmm. How far down do we go? You know, there's as you had uh, Jeff Huge on yesterday, correct? 
Yes, huh? Sure did. I'll tell you, he he's, he steals my thunder. I'll tell you that much. Cause, he uh, steals he, everybody's thunder. He's, he's unbelievable. He's very good. Yeah. He covered all everything that I wanted to cover, especially the breaks in the market and all the gaps onto the downside. And you can see those gaps in the downside that uh, – we're going to be, you know, we're eventually going to work on because when it comes to, we all know that all, you know, the, the Japanese, Steve Nissan has always said the Japanese have the quote, all windows get closed. And mm -hmm. what happens in the marketplace today, because 90% of the volume is traded via computer, via program trading, what you see is not what the algorithms see. Any of those big breaks that you see in the market, these big candles, these big bars, the algorithms see as windows. And these windows need to be closed. And this is what normally happens right after all these windows open. These are targets. These are where the algorithms are going to take the market. And you've got to be aware of that in terms of you know placing your stops for example especially if you're uh, intraday trading but i wanted to take a look at mr you know we've got ourselves in, in in quite a quite a bit of we've got ourselves stuck in the mud here in terms of this economy and i was watching jerome powell the, the other day and he seemed just nervous as a cat and i noticed something about this guy you take a look at his tie. Now, he's either – he either has only one tie or, you know, that's his lucky tie. I know the answer to that question, Bill. You do? Yes. He has the same haberdashery guy that Trump has, so that's <laughs> got to be the reason. It's they use the same ties. One day it's Wednesdays, every, the other day it's Tuesdays. So that's my feeling. <laughs> it's just. It's it's Maury's on 52nd Street off of Fifth Avenue. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> it makes complete sense. We, in my daily report that my clients get, they get it an hour before the market opens. We get a. Uh, You get an introduction into what the what my thinking is on the day. You also get a roadmap to mm -hmm. the day's profile, and what the one thing that I'm doing that I, I have yet to find uh, someone doing it as well. But I put the turn times in in the marketplace, and this is when when the programs are triggered, they leave a huge footprint on the tape. And if you know how to read them, you can tell they're planning tomorrow's market. Now, I know this is, you know, some people tell me I'm crazy, but they're right now they're planning tomorrow's market today. Mm -hmm. I so agree as, with that. As these programs go off, you know, 9 o'clock here, 9.20, there's a start, there's a stop. From 9.25 to 10.35, 11 o'clock, the 11:30 turn. Yep. The kick at 12. This great buy program here, right into 1300. Yeah. And then again, up to 1450, where they break and bring it in for the close. Wow. And the what I wanted to do. I could bring this slide up. I wanted to go back. to hear and I don't mean to re what we're looking at here is the delta chart with the count and we've reached point eight I believe we're into nine going into ten but where are we going forward where I see us going forward here 
is that we're right around in this territory. And I'm insisting that we're going higher here. And this is to possibly th um, just below where we were. Okay. Hey, Bill, we've got to take off here, but we want to thank you for being on. We'll have you on again later date and uh be safe out there and uh thank you thank you very much larry I stay on the green stay it. on the green side of the grass my friend right trendreaction.com trendreaction.com bill chapman we'll be back folks with the wrap up Back in the day, I joined the Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. And someone asked me a question about the money supply and all that stuff, folks. I used to look at that stuff back in the late 70s, early 80s. And I don't need it, don't want it, don't care about it. Now I just look at the bar charts, you know, and keep it as simple as possible. And remember the old movie with City Slickers? <laughs> that is uh, basically what you're saying here is learn to do one thing, as Curly said, and do that one thing well. And what I try to do is to figure out how much money I have to risk to see if I'm right. And that's all I'm looking at. Now, we've been as high as 1905 in the gold. We're looking at 1906. To me, that's close enough for government work. 
So I would certainly be interested in getting out of the gold, long gold positions if he brought those down there at 1982, working out okay because the risk there was only six. You made uh, at least uh, you made 20 bucks on that, so that's three times, still a little better than three times. So that's pretty good. The euro position is still going. And what we want to be watching, folks, is get your little telescopes out, set them on your desk, and write these two numbers down, 3438 in the E-mini S&P and 15,950 in the NASDAQ. Those are the ones that you want to pay close attention to. We're uh, moving pretty good now. We're getting the S&P back up here again. Uh, we're at 3431. We just jumped about eight handles. Folks, if this doesn't hit 3438, my name's not uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, and I'll be back. But that, it's certainly got all those numbers written all over it. It really does. I mean, it's got so many patterns in there that, you know, it just doesn't seem possible. And, hey, believe me, I shouldn't say that because it happens all the time. But just look at this chart in final here. You'll see here that we are really close to this little puppy. And uh, like we say, if it gets above the... Uh, 34.53, it's certainly wrong and gone and long, and that's what it'll be. But right now, we're still heading up to that level. So sort of keep paying attention to it. That's the way we look at it right now. So we'll see you folks tomorrow. Uh, don't think we have a guest tomorrow, but uh, we'll be, uh, we'll be nope, no guests tomorrow. And uh, that's pretty much what we're watching. That will be the ninth. We don't have anything in the lunar part until the new moon on the 16th. And we're going to try to get our friend Mr. Winsky in the next week maybe to uh, chat with us a little bit uh, on the next lunar cycle that we have. So that's what we're watching, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless.